Yeah, I started mine too. I feel that way. I feel sexy. Whenever we feel like we just like roll into, we can we can start it whenever you know. But I got my microphone. I got it set up. Okay. In front of my face. How does this sound? Where I'm right in front of my microphone. <laughs> it sounds so much better. <laughs> Like my voice sounds better, or just sounds more clear. Your voice clear. sounds so much more clear, like you're talking in my ear versus an echo in a room. This is why we need those panels. Okay. Well, I need to rotate this. Oh, it can just rotate towards me. Interesting. Okay. I can do that. I will do this without knocking this over. Hopefully. Put this right here. I'm curious how close you are to your microphone versus how close I am to my microphone. Well, how close are you to your microphone? Eight-ish inches. I am probably within six to eight inches. Well, I will, about the same. I'm also kind of wondering, though, should I move my arm somewhere else? Because I have to lean back. Because mine's on the very edge of my desk, and it's just kind of like... Yeah. I need it somewhere else, I think. I guess just put it wherever it's most comfortable. I don't know if it'll fit. Oh, maybe it will. Hold on a second. Let me adjust the shit. Yeah. Get off there. Oh, wait. I can stay like that. With this. Like, get off there now. You, you get. You son of a bitch! You son of a bitch! You you get. Oh, the whole thing just came off. <laughs> stand, stand by. Come on out of love. I'm so lost without you. We're gonna do a podcast with Tan and Dan Gaming. <laughs> and that's how we got our intro. That's it. That's we're starting right there. If it wasn't so loud, you put your microphone back up. We probably would. <laughs> you, know, you know what, bro? You know what? Okay, like, all right, okay. Oh, there we go. This spot actually does work. Oh my goodness, this is gonna work good. That's why. Plant it. It's a soul loud. What's loud? Me moving it? The, the fiddling of the microphone. Really? It sounds like someone's uh, gave a child some plastic spoons and a pan. She's <laughs> <laughs> like, da, 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 it's possible that that is what's happening. The microphone's moving around. I might have a child with some spoons. Oh and a pan. yeah. <laughs> it is possible. Well, I mean, it sounds like you're set up. You good? I am. Uh, I'm pretty set up now. Yes. We're we gonna shoot from the hip here. I'm shooting from the hip. <clears throat> well, okay, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Okay, how do I sound? Uh, well, that close sounds almost a little distorted, kind of loud. Okay, how do I sound right? How do I sound right here? That's that's decent. Okay. That's decent. That's decent. Got it. You also have your pop filter. I need to get a pop filter. What is, does that even do anything here? Like, I, this is without my pop filter. This is with my pop filter. It's so hard to tell, man. I, really, I, just, <laughs> I don't know. There, there you go. So you don't need a pop filter. <laughs> I think it's more. This just kind of came with it. I, well, maybe it's a cheap one. Oh, listen maybe, to this maybe. guy. Just saying, listen, maybe. listen to this guy. Maybe it's a cheap one. Oh, it's maybe, garbage. Maybe, it's right. trash. It's it trash. It's trash. I'm just saying it might be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Well, we we got our questions. So I feel like the, the I have five. Let's see here. I have five main questions to ask, but I also um I got the the six is more just the introduction one. I didn't use that. As okay. a question. Okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So, uh, what's what's our game names in game? Uh, I think we both introduce ourselves. Okay. So my game name is Tan. Uh, you can say Super Sexy Tan. You can say the Greatest Tan is a God. I mean, whatever, whatever floats your boat. My name is Tan. My name is Tan. My name is Tan. 
It's Tam. T A M. Do you go by any other versions of that, or just using Tam for most of the stuff? Uh, the name actually derives from the name Tanthalus, which is from the Dragonlance books. Um, I you know, if you're familiar with those or not. I, I, I did not read those, but some people may have. So. They are <laughs> amazing books. Uh, the Companions, I think, is like the first book for those. Um, but there's like five or six of them, and Tanthalus is like the half elf. He's like half human, half elf. His mom was um, like she was an elf, and she was like brutally raped or something during some war. And you get Tan oh, and you get <laughs> yeah, 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 and you get uh, you get Tan Thales, who everybody hated because he was like neither side. You know, humans were like, ah, oh, you look like an elf, and elves were like, ah, oh, you look like a human, so you huh. suck. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's where I, that's where I get the name from. I, 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 I don't know how it got shortened to tan. I think that was from my friends that did that. My yeah. gaming friends. Yeah, it seems like it how it kind of works out typically. It kind of stuck. It's more, it's more like, uh, like damn it, tan or God, like, ah, oh! you know, but, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's good. And, and your name, your name, uh, I, my name has jumped so much as you know, I've, I've got, I've gone through several gaming names but for one we were finally got settled on here is the kudensu um and we we really got to that point with kudensu because we were trying to come up with a gaming channel name um and my previous gaming channel names are just gaming names in general they were not they weren't working out with how <laughs> with our gaming channel so um i think uh Kaylin actually just came up with Tan and Dan gaming channel thought it sounded good. I think she did. Um, and I I thought it sounded good too, but uh, I didn't want to uh, use. I don't know. It just it, it didn't work out with my previous gaming name. But then I came up with Kudensu, and I was like, you know what? That that works out. Which that, means which means good. what? Which means what? I believe it means uh, either means dance. I think it believe, I believe it means dance of some kind um, with different variations of the Japanese words. Um, but I believe the actual kudensu means dance or close to dance. Um, and then depending on how you, the, the, the pre word up to it would be like snake dance or, or other styles of dance, that kind of thing. Um, which wasn't my, wasn't really any kind of goal of mine to make my name mean that it just happened to line up. I was just curious in the Japanese sense. But mainly it worked out because it's it's a full gaming name that doesn't resemble a personal name um, or a real name, but also has the word Dan in it, so it, just, it rolls off the tongue with Dan and Tan Gaming. So it worked out. I just want to make sure that people know uh, that my name is a color. Is a color? <laughs> tan, tan. Nice, nice tan color. Not, not, not a great color, not my favorite color, but it's yeah. a color. <laughs> You know, um, actually, while we're on the topic, um, I know that at one point your name was a pumpkin. It was. I I bounced around for the, when I very first started gaming. I I don't remember if I came up with it or somebody came up with it for me, but I, I had the name Orin. Orin was my gaming name for every game I ever played um, for probably six years. Um, or longer, I don't even know. But it, it started out as Oren, and then my uh, my dad plays games. He's, his name was Keegan, and so we, we for all the warrior uh, games we played in MMOs, I would do Oren Keeganson. It just kind of it just it just sounded good, and it also made a connection that I'm Keegan's son, so Oren Keeganson. Um, but yeah, I just I, I got to a certain point where I was like, you know what, I didn't really feel a super close connection with that name. It wasn't a name that I remember creating for myself. It was just something that I used as a kid. Um, and so I was trying to find, I was trying to, I was just kind of trying to come up with new names, man. I wanted to find something different, something that it was like my name. And so I think you and me were joking about it one night and we were talking about like coming up with a new name. I think jokingly you suggested, uh, uh, like Captain Pumpkin or Sergeant Pumpkin or something like that. You know, I was like, you know what? You know like, what? That that sounds pretty dang good. <laughs> but 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 you were long cut. One. I was. Yep. 
I, I, I at like 18 or 19, I changed uh, some some of my channels, not all of them. Uh, for MMOs, I still used Orin, but for some of my other stuff, uh, first person shooters, stuff like that, I went to Long Cut because I, I did tobacco for a long time. Um, How long is a long time? Uh, seven, eight years now. And you just like quit and had no issue? Well, I, I off and on. I still chew every now and then. But the, the name really wasn't part of the reason of stopping or not stopping. The name was just like, you know what, that was a that was a kid's another kid's name that I came up with that I was like sitting at a desk probably like couldn't think of a name for a new freaking like an origin account or something you know, that I was creating and I just happened to be dipping at the time so I just wrote long cut and then long cut probably didn't work so I wrote long cut one or something like something like that you know it wasn't any there was no serious effort put into them so my very first name uh, was actually Blood King Seven. I don't remember if I tried to do Blood King or if it like it was taken or whatever, but this was for like StarCraft back in the day, and mm -hmm. I had Blood King Seven. I mean, it was like super kid deal. Also, my password was Blood, so that <laughs> <No. laughs> wasn't wasn't very imaginative. It wasn't very imaginative. Yeah. After that, it became uh, a number of different things. Like I think RuneScape, it was like Map Maker. Um, mm -hmm. And then at one point, it finally became Zero Tragedy, which stuck with me pretty much even to this day. Um, yeah. Tan originated from WoW. That's when I started doing that. I guess, I'd, I guess I've guess i had the name since I was like 15, but that's when it like really kind of stuck. It's when I started playing WoW. All my friends started playing WoW. We huge WoW nerds. WoW, WoW, WoW. Yeah. <laughs> it's still alive after like all these, all these years. It, it amazes me how long that game has gone. Um told the offshoot of a topic but yeah it's it's pretty impressive at one point there were i think it was like a million there was there was over a million people playing the game i i highly doubt that's still the case today but there are some mm -hmm. quite 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 a few people I'm then sure you get the they... occasional like dual boxer but he has like seven accounts and they're all yeah. just following <laughs> his one character and he like, presses a key and they all like do the same spell and you're like oh my gosh what i just died to it's like parade of like seven shamans yeah yeah i was gonna say I, i'm sure when they come out with these new expansions so like that it probably brings a lot of people that quit playing temporarily back into it it probably jumps that average up again but oh uh, i try to avoid yeah. the alliance side that seems to be where all like the 10 year olds are like, <laughs> super high voices like let's go get them you know like since we're on that topic coming from a person that was never a wow player uh, I played Guild Wars, Guild Wars One, Guild Wars Two, uh, since I was a kid up through that. And I love, I love that MMO. I loved, I loved playing that game, but never got into WoW. I think it could, mainly because I couldn't afford it. Um, starting out, I couldn't afford the monthly subscription. You just had to pay once for Guild Wars and you just played. Right. Um, right. So I never, I never got into WoW. I never played WoW. But people that play WoW are super serious. Hard, hardcore WoW players are super serial about the, the, the different sides, the Alliance versus the Horde, and, and all that goes. And coming into it, to play games with you and, and, and bought WoW and to do that new expansion was like, it was so funny to, to watch you squirm when I joked about like going to the Horde side, or going to the, the Alliance side. Oh, that, sh that shit was you not just, funny. You <laughs> that shit was not funny at all. But it's just, it's it's comical to me because it's like it's it's not a it's not a thing in my brain. You know, like I didn't I didn't have the experiences of going through the storylines throughout the game's history and all that kind of stuff that you guys have had. Um, it's a pretty serious topic amongst the wild players. Yeah, I actually believe it or not, I started as Alliance with uh, with Dragon, one of my closest friends, and. Uh, the whole time I was like, "This sucks. Like we, I, like why are we, why are we alliance? Like this, this side sucks. Like let's go horde." And eventually, I was able to convince uh, him and my other friends to go horde. And best time of my life, best decision ever. Never went back. <laughs> but I just gnomes from the alliance side are pretty much the bane of my existence. Like I, I, I had nightmares at several times of like. My friends being like, oh, like, let's all make gnomes on, on the Alliance side. And like, we'll raid like this. Oh, no. 
No. You know, I know gnomes and goblins are would, would be, I'd be shunned for comparing the two, but there is that, uh, there's an anime called Goblin Slayer, which I don't know if you've watched that yet. It's a relatively new anime. I believe the first season has finished, so you can you go watch that now, because I know you're really anti-watching seasons in the middle. Yes, I am. Um, but that, that series, uh, it, don't like gore or really crazy violence and rape it, it will throw you for a loop when it very first starts out it just seems like such a normal anime rolling into it and then the first episode you're just like oh my gosh what am i watching <laughs> like there <laughs> is gore and violence and rape oh yes oh yes there is gore violence and rape to the point of almost being porn uh in the very first episode and I was like, this is insane, jaw-dropping, what am I watching? But it's actually a very good anime when it rolls into it. It's, it's a very good uh, season. I'm looking forward to the next one. So it's shockingly good. It's shockingly good. It has a lot of shock content to the very first episode. Um, very graphic. Um, I would not advise young people to watch that episode. Uh, or season. You, so it's called The Goblins. Go, uh, the Goblin. The Goblin. Slayer. Yes, it's called the Goblin Slayer. But you were talking about the gnomes and raiding, and that's that's what I envision is these, basically, the the premise of the anime without spoiling anything for you is uh, a a knight of of a kind that in this guild format that takes these quests, but he only takes goblin quests. He is the Goblin Slayer. He will only take goblin quests. It is his main goal dash. But what he lives for is to eradicate goblins because of something that happened in his past. Um, but you're, you're talking about like wow and, and raiding as gnomes. I mean, I just picture that same concept. These like just evil little creatures. That, oh, gnomes uh, are evil. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, I would say gnomes are totally evil. I mean, the lions would beg to differ, but you know, yeah. what? <laughs> you know what? When you got when you have a gnome, which this this is what gets me. There are. There are, like, gnomes can be a warrior class. Like, what? They can yeah. be a warrior class? You can't go over there and, like, take the hit of something 500 times its size? Come on, man. It's already, <laughs> it's already a stretch when you got humans taking a hit from something 20 times a, their size. A gnome, a gnome tanking for you. That's what I'm saying. That is what yeah. I'm saying. And that is what the, what the nightmares I would have. I mean, it's not all the time, but it would be, like, once in a blue moon. I'm like, oh, guys, I woke up. Thankfully, I woke up. You know, <laughs> you, you know, so any, anyways, uh, moving on from this, what is your second question? Cause I guess we're, we should be doing yeah, introductory. We'll, we'll through that. So, uh, the introductory, that was introductory. Um, uh, our ages, how, how old are you? I, uh, am 29 years old. I had to think about that for a second. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be 30 soon and it's going to be a very, very sad day for me. Yeah. Um, I, I know you're very, you take birthdays you, i mean like from what i from what i've seen of you you like birthdays like any other individual but you take them a lot harder than getting older thing than most people do i feel like the moment i turned 18 oh, oh, oh moment, phone call ruined i know i just i just ignored him even though it's work i'm like yeah, yeah. i'm not, I'm like get out of here bitch um like, anyways, I'll call you, I'll call you back. <laughs> yeah, more important things going on right now yeah. uh so wait wait where was that? I lot's myself. Well, the you take birthdays more serious than the average person. I yeah. Like. So when I turned eighteen, I pretty much was like to my parents. I said them straight to their face. I'm like, this is game over. Like I'm old now. <laughs> I've kind of said that every year from then on. And yeah. the, the sad part about it is, when I was eighteen, I'm like, oh, fucking old. Nineteen, oh, I'm fucking old. Now I'm going on thirty. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm. Fucking old, dang it! I'm, it's like yeah, actually and those, and those coming true. Years. Yeah, those eighteen years probably didn't feel so old. Now you're talking about thirty. Yeah, it's it's becoming true. My my nightmare is becoming true. I would imagine that's going to continue on though, just with your personality. You're going to hit 40, 45, 50, and be like, damn, thirty wasn't that bad, kind of thing, you know? <laughs> probably. I guess I'm one of those people that. I mean, you're not going to predict how I'm going to be. I mean, you might you might be somewhat right, but yeah. Well, since we're talking about age uh, and how old we are, how when did you start playing games? That'd be a good question to jump into. Oh, so I was actually the kid that goes outside 
all the time. Like I go outside and I climb trees or I jump off the roof yeah. or I just do like crazy shit. But I would, <laughs> I would, I would be in, I was very, very outgoing, like outside wise. I think yeah. it all began when I was given a Game Boy uh, by my dad. And we're talking, we're not talking like all these fancy, like Nintendo Switch action, yeah, which, old I, school. which I do have. We're talking old school, like yeah. it is the gray, big, bulky mother trucker with a greenish yellow screen and yeah. it's black print. And the, and the screen is like, I don't know, an inch and a half. If yeah, that, it's that tiny. Yeah. So, and that thing's a tank. It works to this day, you know? Yep. Yep. Um, but that, that is when I started and it only got worse from there because I would say I have a pretty big, like ADD or ADHD personality or both, I should say. And mm-hmm. that gave me the stimulus that I really, it just, it really gave me the stimulus that my body like craved. So it just total addiction from then on. And I think a lot of people have that, um, yeah. or, or enjoy that stimulus, even if they're not so much ADHD or ADD as me, um, mm-hmm. So I, I think a lot of people get sucked in, especially if they get like a really good game. Like for me, it was Pokemon. Like I, I didn't, yeah. I didn't trade the cards. Didn't trade the cards. I do have the cards. Didn't trade them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, didn't play. Didn't play the card game. Didn't know how. Whatever. Um, but the game itself on the Game Boy was like one of the best games I've ever played. And I, I actually started out with Pokemon Blue. I believe it was. Uh, there was green and there was red. I think I got my hands on green later. Red, I never got, but I did want just for the nostalgia of it. Mm -hmm. So those were like the three. I did get yellow. And then after that, things kind of went crazy. I I mean, at one point, I knew all 150, well, I should say 151, if you want to include Mewtwo and Mew, uh, Pokemon by name, show me an image of them. I'm like, bam. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Can I do that today? Uh, I don't know. I'm getting old. Maybe not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially if you do the new Pokemon, I'm like, it's like I don't even know how many now, like a thousand, over a thousand. Who knows? Yeah. And and they're not even they're not even that creative anymore. Like you see a chair, and it's like Cherimon. Yeah. yeah. But that's it kind is. of an example of Digimon. But regardless, it's like Lampella or something like that. Yeah, that's not the the, the creative thought process to each character and each each design is. Well, probably fell off. A yeah, little bit. It, it's not the same to me for sure. It became more marketable, and they just started pushing out. I would imagine it's probably what happened. Yeah, exactly. But um, so that so you started out you have a Game Boy, and then you were talking about. I, I've heard a story in the past that you you need an internet to your house very badly, and you worked out a deal somehow to make that happen. Oh my goodness! Yes. Um, so I would always go over to my friend Dragon. In fact, mm-hmm. uh, I would go over to his house, and he lived in kind of like a urbish, like urban or what was it, suburban? Like there, like he had a lot of houses around him, whereas I lived on seven and a quarter acres. Like there's no one around me. Yeah. Um, so yeah. we didn't we didn't have cable internet. Like that wasn't mm-hmm. or or DSL. All we had was fifty six k. You know the you know like yeah. the <laughs> The pretty much ear splitting phone, like making the phone busy for just days on end, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, super slow stuff. I remember watching a video. It was like a three minute video. I think it took me an hour to watch. Like that, that ridiculous. Um, but anyways, to get internet and what we had available to us at the time uh, was Comcast, or I guess it was in the area, but not quite up our road. Is I my I told my dad I said you know hey I I'd really like to get uh, Comcast internet I know that like I've tied up your phone for days on end and he's like yes it makes me very upset when we don't get the calls that we should be getting <laughs> so <laughs> you know I'll, I'll just be like wow man I haven't heard the phone ring in like three days which is super I mean that back then I mean, you only have a landline you don't yeah. I mean, yeah, there's other options. There weren't really, I mean, there were cell phones, but like our family didn't have them at that time. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, so I, you know, I, I told him about this, and he said, "Well, you know, I'll, I'll talk to him and figure it out." Blah blah blah. Well, it came down to uh, they were willing to do it, but they needed 
they they basically would have had to trench from the power pole all the way over to our house and this power pole was like 200 yards plus away from our house Mm -hmm. and you know the cost for it was just ridiculous um so my dad said like oh you know we're not we're not paying for that um and i said well what if i what if i dig dig a trench yeah and he said well i'm i'm fine with that if you like if you really want to do it, if you want about enough um this is like how far you're going to, have to do it and i remember it's like a foot down and like two and a half inches wide so i mean i i don't even know why it would be that deep to be honest but whatever so i spent the next like 16 and a half hours with a pickaxe <laughs> with a pickaxe and a shovel and i just went ham like non-stop like using all that bright unbridled youthful energy and just yeah. <laughs> did this entire trench in, in like one full day and wow. and after that i had internet and i started just going i mean it was like a whole new world and yeah. i've and i've been stuck ever since i mean it really is what it comes down to did, did you guys have internet like off the bat or did you have to do something or i believe they had internet up our road we, we moved from Renton up to uh the graham area i believe the people up our road already had internet connection the downside to that is it's not very good internet connection as you know now it's it's very poor um it would it would take days to download any any kind of game that had even a medium-sized amount of data to download. Uh, so downloading any of the big MMOs, you know, World of Warcraft or Guild Wars, anything like that, would literally take 24, 30 hours to download. And if anything happened, if anything interrupted it, something went wrong, you're talking about another day's worth of downloading, you could restart it over again. See, now, um, believe it or not, that that is actually good like when i had 56k to download a game it was about seven days like it was yeah. always it was always typically like around a week or more yeah and, and then you're talking about something goes wrong with that oh my gosh yeah ex- exactly so it i mean it was always cds like cds 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 if you didn't have cds uh, and you were downloading something online it just was astronomically painful brutal yeah pretty much but uh, I guess um, to answer the same question for that I asked you, I I'm twenty twenty six now. I think twenty five. You're, you're I feel like you're older than me. I'm I'm getting old. Oh jeez, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I started gaming. Man, I want to say I want to say I was probably ten. Um. Because, like I kind of already said, my, my dad games, and him and my sister and my brother all started playing Lineage back in the day. Lineage, the, the original, when it first came out. Um, so I watched them when I was younger playing these games. I wanted to play. I was not allowed to play uh, until a later period. What do you mean you weren't allowed to play? I was not allowed. I, because of the... I don't know exactly. I actually don't know if it was mainly the people you're playing online with um, and they didn't want me playing online with people at that age or what the case may be. Um, We're talking probably eight years old or something like that um, wanting to play these games. But they basically are like, when you get old, it was always when you get older. I can't remember what the stipulations were, but basically when I was, I want to say probably 11, or 12 um when guild wars came out i don't know if it was before guild wars came out that we had talked about this and i was going to be allowed to play or if it was after it just came out and we talked about it and i was allowed to play but i basically i saved up money and i bought a copy of guild wars one the original and i uh i made my character started playing on that on my dad's computer we didn't have a computer at the time so i was playing off his his system um, so whenever he was at work and he worked a three on three off. So whenever he was at work, I would just play all the time, nonstop as much as I could. <laughs> and I do remember that game, Guild Wars 1. I played that game as well. Like the max was like, max level was like 20 or 25 or something like that. Yes. I believe it was 20. Uh, I think they may have raised it to 25 later, but I believe the original, I think it was 20. I can't remember. It's, it's been a long time. 
but they uh yeah i played that for a, for a long time um and never competitively i feel like you that's the, that's the big difference between you and me when we were younger is you you were very competitive in wow you guys you guys did very competitive raids you were all about top damage i recall uh very top tier as much as you could be versus my style of play and most was very laid back i actually was in a guild of mostly 40 to 50 year olds in, in that bracket that just wanted to play games nonchalantly relaxed in a setting that wasn't so strict because there was so many guilds back then they had rules you had to follow that you had to have to make this much xp a day you had to do this much you know whatever this much gain this much gold for the clan like you know whatever the rules were there was so many like that and i don't know if you guys did that in your heyday with the wow stuff if you were anything like that but there was so many like that that you it was hard to find uh laid back guilds to just just to play the game and go through the story modes and, and play and play throughout the game um and this the one guild that my dad was in they were mostly older guys that just wanted to have fun play the game there was nothing serious about it and that's that was the guild's motto basically it's just have fun do your thing it wasn't a big deal so that that was my like experience with games for i don't know how long it was 10 years but yeah, how did you like how did you do content like that like did you do right like raids like did you no, do like, yeah, in-game content we, we it was mainly it was mainly all in-game story modes stuff you know it was the missions that you played in groups with the, with the guild um helping people uh get get through things they couldn't get through by themselves um just helping out where you could there was a lot of uh kind of open world content missions, new expansions, things that the whole guild would kind of run through together and help anybody that needed help in it. Um, there were guild raids or, uh, or what they were called, um, guild battles, I think they were called, that we did participate in a couple of those. I think we did them on the weekends, like every Sunday or something like that, every Sunday evening, if everybody was available. That's another thing. Like, again, we weren't super serious about it, so it wasn't like everybody had to be there. It was just like, if we have enough people, we'll try it out. Um, but again, nothing, nothing was like, oh my gosh, we have to be number one. I believe we were like, I don't even know, some odd thousands down the line, you know, towards the bottom of the rankings all the time. Like it was never an issue. Like we just played to play. We weren't that good. We just had fun, you know? I'm not but, sure. I'm not sure when I started becoming this like extremely competitive like what age specifically, but I do remember that before WoW, um, and I want to say like I started being super competitive probably, uh, I'd say around like 19. I, I did play WoW before then, um, but I didn't, I don't think the com like competitive world was even really a thing. Like it was, yeah. it was, but there were so few people that were actually competitive like mm -hmm. you did i was never a part of that like i didn't know anybody i didn't have any like i mean i had dragon and like what other what, what other friends but they they weren't like super serious either at the time um, yeah and if anything we were more serious uh with counter-strike like we had a counter-strike team mm -hmm. um we actually played uh in calo um i mean you know which is like I guess the the least professional that you can get in a professional setting. Hmm. So yeah, so I mean, Counter Strike was pretty much my life until WoW took it over. I suppose. Gotcha. So yeah, it was it was very different uh, different mindsets. I guess um, looking at you starting out versus me because it was it, there there was just no competitiveness whatsoever in the games I played. So when I and when games would come out, say like um, Counter Strike or Call of Duty, Battlefield, um, those kind of games, I, I wanted to play them. They interest me. They look like great games, but trying to play them with a very non uh, what, what's the word for it non uh, competitive attitude, just wanting to play to play, and then hearing how competitive the people were that you were playing with and how angry they would get <laughs> getting you to play player unknown battlegrounds was I took a while. so hard in the beginning 
Well, that's what I was actually kind of getting to. Is like it, it was I would play these games off and on, but really preferred to play them solo. I would solo campaign all these games. I never played online because people got so serial about it. They were so serious. Um, they would get so frustrated and mad if you did something that they considered to be wrong that it just wasn't fun for me. It wasn't it wasn't fun to play with people like that. And I didn't play with the people that were in the guild that I play with in Guild Wars didn't play these other games. They were they were more MMOs, just straight players. They didn't play these other first person shooters. So I didn't really have any friends that I knew that played those games at the time. It was just the older guys I knew. Um so coming, like say, 10, 13 years, 14 years down the road, uh, when you started bringing me into um, the gaming first-person shooter world, trying to get me to play um, player, unknown, player Unknown's Battleground, uh, there was some very there was some very real hesitation to, to even play that game. Oh man, it was it was tough. It was tough it, to get you to play that game. There was there was a, a very it was interesting to me I, w- I won't say it didn't interest me but there was not an urge to play it because of the stuff that I had grown up playing and the experience that I had with those the people that played those games how competitive they were I just didn't even care to play with those people I didn't have that same competitive nature to try to win so it wouldn't have been fun for me so yeah it was it was it was it was rough like trying to get me out of my shell getting to play those games. Um, I think we did Counter Strike, you and me, for a while. Um, I think you advised me to turn off my uh, my um, in-game uh, chat, so or, or the uh, microphone, so you wouldn't be able to hear people talk. Oh yeah, I, because not um, even the, worse. The, the, the wreckage that would have occurred trying to start out and learn. Some people are um, just trolls in general, so yeah. I know that I'm really bad for it. Like I. Back back in the day, not anymore. But back in the day, like I was right there along those people. Like I would troll people that are bad. I mean, not necessarily like com- like like harsh on like people that were just bad in general. But like yeah. I would troll people that tried to troll me. Like I was yeah, you troll I, the trolls. I ha- I'd have a very big person. I have a very big personality, and if you're going to like attack me. There's like a 75, 80% chance that I am going to attack you back. <laughs> like, there, there, like, like there's that 20, 25% chance that I won't if I'm not feeling like I want to, or maybe they're completely in the right, like uh, what, what, yeah. if, with what they're saying. But if they're not, and they're just being like assholes, like you push me, I push back. That's just how well, I've always I, been. I feel like it became kind of a culture for, for that kind of style of game. Like if you, if you did something that someone just deemed as suckage, you would just get shit on. And starting out, people that aren't good at it and get shit on all the time, I feel like that's a very real feeling you get and it makes you want, people that are competitive, makes you want to be better. And then when they finally get to a point where they are competitive too and can basically keep up with the people that were shitting on all the time, it just rolls right into the next the next generation. They are they become the shitters. You know they they become the guys that are just dishing out the crap. Because I, I would agree. They, they got dished on. You know it's like I I can keep up now, and so that that I don't know. It's it, it just feels like a culture in that kind of game that you even know how much it sucked trying to play that and fit in and get into the system. As soon as you got in and felt accepted and were a good player. All of a sudden, it was like, oh, I, you know, it, you just, you just like joined in kind of thing. You know, this I, actually reminds me of like real life. Like if you oh, go yeah. and if you go and do something for the first time in front of people that do this all the time, like you're gonna look like an idiot. Like you're gonna look like an idiot. Like they may or may not say something, but they probably will give you like they probably will rag on you or give you a little bit of a hard time. Eventually, yeah. you'll figure out what you're doing, and then it kind of rolls downhill to the next person. I think that's almost yeah. like a guy thing to do. Yeah, I think it is. I feel like um, I feel like things you could take away from that, just thinking about it out loud, would be to persevere through through hard issues. You know what I mean? Like if you if you want something, if you want to do something, you want to play something, there's something that you want to accomplish. It doesn't really matter the shit that's get, that you get from something like that, as long as you know what you want to do. Um, very easily, if you want to play a Counter Strike style game, you can just turn off, turn off the microphones. 
because you turn them off, it's just like playing any other game. You can't hear the crap they're talking. You know, you know, it doesn't it doesn't even no, matter I, at that point. Yeah, that's why. I mean, that's exactly exactly what I said because it doesn't. What they say doesn't matter. No, hearing it it can affect you. Obviously, You're hearing all the shit they're talking about, like you miss a shot or whatever the case may be. Um, but if you didn't you ever hear it to begin with, you know, you, you didn't know. You know, you don't even think about it. It just goes right to the next the next game. The only thing so, that's important is when I say something. I'm like, damn it, Daniel. Yeah, that, that's that's what's important. Just focus on my voice. Yep, yep. But so I feel like I feel like you get when you get into the the rhythm of things. That's how life is in general, though. You you really just gotta kind of just you want something. Don't worry about exactly what everybody says about it. Just kind of do what you want to do, man, and and it'll eventually work itself out. So yeah, I agree with that. Uh, for me, mine is I basically try harder. Until yeah. I'm until I'm better, yeah. And once I'm better, it's like, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Then, then you can start shitting on people, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, they I say like they say like actions speak louder than words. Well, I'm very loud until I have those actions. There you go. There you go. Uh, next one. Let's probably put some time on you. You got a clock going or no? Yeah, I do. I'm at uh forty minutes. All right. Uh, next question would be. Uh, we'll try to ring through these a couple of these. What, what's your favorite game to play right now? What's your top favorite game um, right now to play? People are going to laugh, but it's still World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft. Yeah, I, I feel like if I would have asked this question, say, a month ago, it would have been something else. But, yeah, you, you jump back into World of Warcraft. Uh, well, actually, it kind of went in and out. You you were, when the expansion came out, you all, you all started playing again. It's hard. It's hard. I have friends that have played this game for so many years with me that, like, we will do... So, like, a new expansion will come out. We'll all get it. We'll play through, like, content, uh, like, the first content, maybe even the second content, and then we'll abandon the game until the next expansion. Yeah, yeah. So, well, that kind of yeah. happened this time. I feel like you guys all played for a while. You, they all abandoned it. I stayed with Including... it. I actually stayed with it in this case because... Uh, I found a guild that they made me join, and I, I don't know, for whatever reason. I'm, there, were, there are actually two people in this guild that gave me a run for my money, kind of, like in, oh. in, in, in DPS. And, okay. I've, and I finally surpassed them. Uh, one of them I'm still kind of like neck and neck, but I consider myself better. Mm. But like very slightly. So I have to, once I get like my gear identical to his and then i do better then i think i will that that will be the the pivotal point where i stop caring yeah that's kind of like our last episode we were talking about like certain goals you have set in your mind that just kind of naturally form you know what i mean like it's just that's what you have to have happen for you to to move on you know (laughs) until the next expansion until the next expansion exactly uh i would say mine favorite game to play right now you you made me, you freaking gave me the bug, man. I I first person shooters ever, ever since uh, Player Unknown Battlegrounds when I finally got comfortable with it. And I'm not even saying I'm any super crazy player. I just enjoy it now. You know, I feel like I can keep up with most people in in one on one battles. I like the team atmosphere. You and me like tag team and things and and Player Unknown Battlegrounds. Um, I I feel like a lot of people would say Apex right now. And I think Apex is a, a great game. I think it's a blast. Uh, but I feel like Planet of Battlegrounds for me is still probably my favorite game just because of it kind of was a, a pinpoint. You know, it, it changed how I felt about first-person shooters playing that game. That makes sense. That games. makes sense. And you tried, I, I tried to bring you to WoW here again, and you just were thinking, like, in the back of your mind, like, the whole leveling thing just turned you off it is it's very it's it's a mind game because i i think i would enjoy playing with you playing playing while with you and doing this stuff but it's such a not knowing the history not knowing the lore of the game i feel like you lose something you know i mean like i feel like to really get to know the game i had to play from several expansions back and get to know a lot of these characters and if you kind of ignore all that say okay there's a lot of fun things we can still do we can go dungeon raid we can do all this once you get like level capped out I would probably still enjoy that, but it's it's like starting from scratch again. I was never super competitive, even in MMOs. So now I'm going from, 
you can kind of getting broken into the competitiveness of first person shooters to going back to being kind of like, I'm not to get broken into the competitiveness of MMOs of the job you have to do, the task you need to do it, and how to do it properly. Now this and, this is interesting. This is interesting because the funny thing about this is that I've played World of Warcraft since I was like 15 or 16, something like that. So somewhere around there. And believe it or not, I don't know shit for the lore. Like, oh, really? <laughs> like I, I, I own Warcraft 1, Warcraft 2, Warcraft 3, like, uh, God, what was the third one? Frozen Throne, I think. Like, I, I, I've all, I, I own, like, all the Warcraft, I, all the Blizzard games, anything to do with World of Warcraft or Warcraft, like, I, I own them. And I've played them and I've beaten them. But I never paid attention too much to the storyline. I know a lot of the characters. Um, yeah. Obviously, that's pretty much impossible for me to not know a lot of the characters' names by yeah. this point. Yeah. But I was never big on the storyline, which is actually sad. Because World of, Warcraft, well, yeah, World of Warcraft has amazing stories. And they have an entire series of books. Like... A huge yeah. series of books that this is all based off of. On, I mean, they have di- diehard fans that yeah. they read these books, you know. And I, I love the Dragonland series. I'm, I'm a very avid reader of, of many different kinds of books. But for whatever reason, I never picked up a little uh, a Warcraft book, which is really surprising to me with playing all these um, games. And maybe someday I will. Um, yeah. So that's why I say it's interesting to me because I do not play for the lore. The lore yeah. is really not even a thing within my playing of, of, of the game. I, I truly only play the game to play with my friends, number one, mm-hmm. um, which they're basically all abandoned the game now, all, <laughs> all, all but like one or two, which damn them. They'll come back though. Yeah, uh, and eventually. yeah, eventually, eventually. Wow can wait. Wow can wait. Yeah. <laughs> um, or, and two, the competitive edge. I've, I've played it. I've played it so long. And it, it is a subscription game. So, like, they get money so they can push out all this content. You know, they can push out more content, expansions. Um, they can fix bugs. Like, they're very... Like, there are some things where everyone can agree with me right now. They're like, like why can't they fix this? Or something like that. There, yeah. there, there's, like, things in that, like, in every game. You know, but, yeah. they're, but they are pretty good at fixing things or listening to the community every, like, you know, often enough to where like, I, I keep coming back to the game. It's just too, it's just too uh, enticing, especially the rating aspect. I mean, it can get, it's just more than any game I've ever played, even to this yep. day. So for that, sure. Was that, was that your fifth question? That, no, that was trying to go second, third, Something like that. We're, we 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 did a lot of offshoots. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. If we were worried about time not being able to make it, how many questions we had, we were very wrong. <laughs> it's, it's taken plenty of time. For, no joke. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, another kind of similar question would be: What what are your top three favorite games of all time? I would definitely say World of, World of Warcraft would be number one. Counter Strike would be number two, and then. For my third one, there's so many. I there's so many different games. I mean, there's a if, lot of games. If I had to pick one for single player and one for multiplayer, I could mm-hmm. easily say uh, Dragon Age number one was the best game I, I think I've ever played. That was a single player game. Mm-hmm. Um, for multiplayer, I would say probably Ark, and Arc that's not good. and that's not like. A super old game or a super yeah. new or a super new game at this point, um, but the world that they created with that—I mean, I love dinosaurs. I've always it loved was, dinosaurs. It was pretty impressive. It was yeah, super impressive, and it's still getting better and better. And don't get me wrong, just like pretty much every other game, it does get tired. You do get bored. You do want to move on to the next thing. Yeah, but it is a, a ama- it is an amazing game for what it is. It's probably one of the biggest sandbox games out there right now. I'd I'd be willing to bet. I yeah. I mean, it's it's interesting because so many games tried have tried to be like Ark since it came yeah. out. Yep. So 
and I don't know, their their spin off Atlas or whatever it is. Um, yeah, I've heard nothing but flops about it. But the thing is, is it'll get better. It'll get better. Uh, very much like Ark was when they first came out. They pre released that too, and it 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 lagged and had issues and crashed a lot when they first let it release. And I think it probably took them a good year. And they're still working on it, but I think it took them a good year before it was quality enough of a game where people could actually be interested in it and play it long term. And honestly, I'm hoping for AOC, Ashes of Creation. Like, I'm really hoping that that jumps to the top, was, top of my list because yeah. I sunk I was 2,500 in that. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna touch on that because that's a game I think a lot of people probably don't know much about yet. Anybody that wasn't part of the Kickstarter backer uh, program probably hasn't even really heard about it. Because they're not even into the into the portion where they're going to start doing the um, alpha testing with the people that had backed it. So, um, yeah, Alpha Creations. If anybody wants to check into that, is going to be. I really hope a great MMO. I'm really excited about it. The the people that are creating it are really looking into the gamer aspect of it. Basically, a gamer a game. Made by gamers is what it really comes down to. But do you know why? Do you know why, though, that I I look so forward to it? The reason why is that every RPG game you play, doesn't matter what it is, well, let's just say 95% of them, are repetitive. Once you get to end game, once you get to end game and you are max level, unless they do something corny shit, like you start over again and you're on the next difficulty or something, you get a level away again. um, They... It's just repetitive. It's repetitive. Like World of Warcraft, for example, dailies. I hate dailies. I don't want to hop on every day, be required to, and do dailies. I, I don't want yeah. to. It, that's what they call them. You know, we got to do them every day. These different quests, and they're all the same or whatever. I, I can't stand it. Whereas Ashes of Creation promises to have an ever-changing world where, like, you know, random things can happen. Like, this yeah. can, ha- can affect this, or this for can sure. affect that. And that is what I look forward to. Yeah, the, the, the changing world, the nodes they're talking about, how something that may not have even been a town 10, 3, you know, whatever many days ago can slowly progress, which is just based on how you interacted with certain people on the map. If you talked to a merchant that had a wagon broke down or something like that, and you helped that merchant get to his destination, and he started selling his supplies at that location, all of a sudden it started to turn into a very small little cottage cabin area and then it turned into a small town these nodes as far as i understand it can grow um across the map when, the, when you get this new map started and generated where it's, it's gonna be just a base there's gonna be nothing and it's gonna grow into something it's gonna grow into town it's gonna grow into cities um and that'll lead to territories and battles and all kinds of things it's, it's gonna be a it's, it's a sandbox game in and of itself very similar to like an arc but kind of pre-generated in a sense but also changes based on actions you take so um very excited about that right so yeah like that, and that's what dragon age one was i said that was like my top game of all time single player i didn't even know about that game my wife introduced that to me and i was like wow well, play this game it's like 10 years old and i yeah. play it and i'm like this is the best game i've ever played you know, yeah. and, and, and a big part of that game was decision making. So things yeah. that you did changed the storyline of that whole game. It wasn't the same no matter what you did. And it was yeah. like that throughout the entire game. It's very impressive. So that's it's, why that's why I enjoyed it so much. Now, if I went back and I like replayed it and replayed it and replayed it like five or six times, maybe I would play out all the options. But my point is, if they can do that on an online game, and, and create just a, a multitude of, of just random occurrences, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. I mean, who wouldn't enjoy that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, next question. Uh, I'm, I'm going to skip one because this is already a full podcast. Anyway, might even save your comments for another one if you want to do that or we can run through them either way. But... Uh, Goals for the channel. What are our goals? Not just you, but both of us. What, what are our goals for this channel we're creating right now? What uh, what would we like to accomplish? Uh, what are some preset goals that we would like to hit? Um, I, I'm just going to shoot off the bat. I would, I would say my, my very first goal 
isn't anything super ambitious. I'm not thinking like to, to live off this channel or anything like that. I'm more thinking like it's just for me, it's, it's starting out to just have fun, um, to take time and, and play games you already play, record, do these podcasts, and just kind of spread whatever joy we might be able to spread. Anybody that finds interest in it, they can watch it and have a good time with us. Um, this sounds good to me. So I guess my, my main goal right now, uh, it's, it's probably just going to get, um, get certified by YouTube. That would probably be my main, my first goal to get, uh, monetized, which I believe as far as I understand it would require a thousand subscribers. And I was a 4,000 hours of, uh, watched video on your channel, I believe is what it was. That's, that's probably mine. That's, that'd be my goal for the channel as of right now. See, my goal is, is a little bit different. And that's funny because we're working together on this, but my goal would be like, and it's actually a couple different parts, but the first goal that I have, I would say would be to have about 10 to 15 actual people just hop on this and be like, Oh, you know, like, I'd really like to talk with these guys or, or just voice an opinion or, oh yeah, or whatever, just any kind of feedback. Like my first, like part of my main goal would be to see feedback from people. And I'm not talking family. I'm talking no, 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 actual yeah. other people. I can see that. that. That, I mean, I, I guess I feel like I, maybe my goal is, is set kind of higher. I feel like it's in the middle of the road. I feel like it's not, I'm not trying to set a goal to where I'm like, Oh, I want to, I want to make serious money off this. But I do feel like uh, accomplishing a monetized channel means that you you put effort in. There, there is some serious effort put in to get monetized now. It's not as you could just click in some buttons. You know, you have to basically be approved and partnered with YouTube. And to do that, you need some serious people following you and some serious hours to be watched. So it's kind. Of, it might be a high sh uh, target to hit. Um, saying like hearing you say yours is probably more realistic to just be be entertaining enough to where somebody is interested. Um, well, somebody yeah. finds enjoyment out of it. Someone's talking with you. Someone's commenting, um, getting feedback. That is, I feel like that's a, a more realistic goal to have right now, just starting out as we are. I don't even know how, like, if I would want to be, like, famous. Like, yeah, if that was even a thing. Like, I, I mean, I wouldn't have any problem with people knowing me. You yeah. know, but there are obviously things that would come into play when you're famous. And there's a lot of, I feel like there's a lot of stuff we don't think about. There's a lot of things they go do, a lot of events they have to go to. And maybe not have to, but if you're going to keep up your channel and your persona and all the stuff that you're doing for your work, you kind of have to, you know, go to these events and whatnot. So I, I can kind of see that. I'm not sure if I would want to be super famous either. I'm thinking like middle, if I was going to just pick something, not, not shooting for it, but just pick something of what I'd be comfortable with, I would say somewhere in the middle of the road <laughs> where you were, you were making money off your channel, but you weren't, you weren't like so crazy famous that you had to like appear at all these big YouTuber events. Like you were getting nominated for things and stuff like that. Like I would, I would want to be just under that line. I think, I don't know. That might change. Yeah. Like money, like money would be good, but, um, uh... You know what I do for work and what you do for work. Like we make good money. Like we yeah. work. We work in the oil fields. Like we make just about as high money as you can in the upper middle class. So, yeah, that's true. so I mean that's that's really not like the goal uh, for this. I don't even know how you would go about doing this or doing that. You know, uh, the the research and stuff. Like the research that I would put in would be on how to grow. Like how how to be able to connect with yeah. the people that watch our show because i there's a lot of people that i watch that i really enjoy listening to uh, yeah and i and i know you're the same way i mean especially with yep. neves gaming for example i i love neves gaming shout out to neves gaming i i freaking love them they're hilarious and they are hilarious uh <laughs> dan actually kind of turned me on to them a little bit too um i'm not as crazy as he is i think he's watched everything they've ever done but, I've probably watched everything, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely haven't watched everything, but they are very funny. So if we can at some point get to where they are, but like have our own kind of deal, that, that, would, yeah. be, that would be perfect for me. I, I, I guess another 
another, I think, like a milestone I could see. Like if you have these in your mind, like you want to plan ahead um, in case things like this occur, because you don't want to get stuck in a trap to where you just didn't plan, and all of a sudden your branding and all this kind of stuff isn't something that you can use because it doesn't. You don't have it. You don't actually have the rights to those kind of things. So I do try to plan ahead. I do try to think ahead as this channel grows, if it does grow, um, the direction we would want to head. And I feel like a milestone for me, like if it ever got to a point where we had a decent amount of fans, we had a following, uh, I feel like a collaboration with one of the channels that I admire, one of the YouTubers or, or content creators that I like, if there was any at some point in the future to where we got big enough to where we could actually do a collaboration with them, they wanted to, whether well, it was a game collaboration, we played some games together, or we did a podcast together, or something like that. I feel like that would that would make me feel like we we, we made something out of this. You know what I mean? Like that would be pretty crazy. I can't. I honestly could never even imagine something like that until you just said it. I know that's what I'm saying. Like it, it's not. I don't want to set that as a goal. It's it's a very lofty goal. I mean, that means you you are a heavy presence playing with some of these players, you know, I'm talking like needs gaming, JT music, um, the guys that do very well for themselves in the YouTube community and have been to a lot of these events. It's, it's kind of this weird in the middle ground, man. It's, it's very, it's weird. Cause I, I would like to be on, not on par, but up with their level enough to where they could be recognized by them and like, Hey, we want to do something with you. That'd be a lot of fun. Let's play some Ark together. Or let's play some Apex together or something like that. And just do like a, a dual Twitch stream or something like that. You know, I feel like that would be such a such a milestone, you know, for where our channel had come from. Well, for you, you could you can actually say to them, like, you know, you were part of my inspiration. Oh, yeah, for sure. I would say, I would say probably if it wasn't for just... For Neebs Gaming in particular, the way they goof about with friends, the, the things that I've heard them talk about, the, the, the way they've changed from the jobs they had, that they were like, I want to be a content creator. I want to make animations and all this kind of stuff and teaming up together with guys that they, you know, you kind of meet throughout your different jobs and then all of them together agree, yeah, let's go do this together and just leave their jobs and, and go start making content is pretty impressive. So I would say if nothing else, they gave me that kind of confidence to say, Hey, if you want to, if you want to make a, a channel, just make a channel. Don't, don't make a channel because you're like, Oh, I'm a, I'm going to be a big YouTuber. You know, don't do it that way with that mindset. Um, that might be, that might work for some people, but I feel like for me, it was just like, I just want to make people laugh. You know, if it, if, what if we goof off and we make mistakes, I'm not the best gamer in the world. I'm not going to even try to be, uh, or try to, uh, hold that spotlight, but I am, if, if it, uh, you will be, and I'll be, I'm happy <laughs> that you have that because I'll be, able, I'll be able to laugh at you as we go. We'll, we'll uh, the community and anybody that likes us will laugh together as we make fun of you with the funny things that we both do together. Um, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of mistakes. I will make along the way. It'll be hilarious. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's really just comes down to just, I just want to have fun with people. I just want to have, I'd like to have fun playing games, editing and making footage, recording this, twitching this, uh, making podcasts, talking about it. It's just another step for me that allows me to be more immersed into the gaming world and the gaming community with other gamers and like my people that can also throw out their opinions on things, you know, so. Well, to, I mean, to wrap, like, to kind of wrap things up, um, like, we plan, I mean, I guess I want to say that, like, this, this, this whole plan, like, this podcasting thing right now that we're doing, like, this is only just one part of what we plan. Like, we plan, we also plan to do stuff, kind of like Neebs Gaming, where we've got that video editing, where, like, it actually shows us playing a game, being stupid, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I just want to, I want people to understand that, like, the podcasting thing is just another side of it. Like I almost yeah. feel like I almost feel like when you're doing podcasting, you're able to like kind of openly talk about like I don't know who you are, or whatever topic you can really get into things. Whereas gaming, like you're being silly, you just mess like messing around, or it takes you're more being focus. super competitive. It takes yeah, you, and and they're, they're they're definitely two different things, but we want to do both, or at least 
I, I'm really, it's funny because Dan actually wants, wanted to do the other thing, whereas I preferred the podcasting because what I do, like, for work, I drive a lot. I mean, he kind of does too, but I drive a lot. You listen to a lot of podcasts. And, yeah, and I, I can listen to podcasts, and I don't know about anybody else, but it's super, like, relaxing. Sometimes it's informative. Um, sometimes it's funny. It's just, it's, it's very entertaining. And I'm, I'm always thinking to myself, you know, it'd be really cool to do that as well because, I mean, they're just talking. Like, they're just talking. People are, like, they get really into it. They talk back. Then you bring people on their, on their like, show and just kind of talk. It's not, like, on TV, on TV. You know, it's not super, yeah. it's not super serial, for example. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I don't know. So, I, I just want people to understand that we are going to do, be doing these two different worlds, you know. And there's, there's more to the channel that we're going to be adding to... Um, our my goal in mind, we've kind of talked about this a little bit, we really would like to put out a video a week. I feel like that's trying to be competitive with everybody else to even keep content moving. Um, but with the schedules we have, it's 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 going to take some, it's going to take a little bit of a learning curve to figure out how to set that up when we have time to do the editing. And it's been a while uh, from editing purposes. I haven't edited something in quite a few years and before, I wasn't even a serious editor. Like, I didn't edit a crazy amount of stuff. It was more just, like, the hunting footage that I caught before into these little half-an-hour shows. And that was a lot of work. That was a lot of sound overlay. There was a lot of music and clip cutting and fading in and out and different scenery. It gave me a lot of that mental image of how I want to see things. Um, I kind of feel like I'll be able to use that role into this. But it's going to take some time with, with new editing software and all that kind of stuff to really get into it. And to make quality content, right? So the next, the next video that we release, uh, I'm going to pose this question to you because this will this will wrap up everything for sure this time. Um, do we do another podcast, or do we do, or or should we say, do we do podcasts until we do the games, or you know what I mean? Like, what would what would be the next? Or what, what, when could we expect to do or release the first actual video of us gaming and having fun and clips, et cetera, et cetera? I'm going to be shooting for our next uh, weekend off, which will be uh, so not, two this weeks. Upcoming, so two weeks. not this upcoming weekend. Yeah, it'll, it'll be probably around uh, the 23rd of March, um, somewhere in there, maybe maybe on a Monday, maybe on Sunday, 24th, 25th, somewhere. I'm going to be shooting for there. Um, I, I feel like this weekend we have now is going to be kind of dedicated to just some footage creation, um, stacking up some storages of, of, of editing of clips and whatnot. And then when we get to our next work to do our following weekend, but maybe we play throughout the week, you know, we're just gonna, we're going to try to go ahead. I'm going to say, I'm going to say the following weekend, 20, 24th, 25th. Yeah, that sounds good. I, I'm going to push all that work towards you. Ah, yeah, yeah. To, towards, towards you. Ah, yeah. There's, there's lots of, lots of things we're going to have to work out. Lots of different who's going to do what and whatnot, how we're going to help out. So it'll be fun. We'll see how it goes. So for anyone who is listening and enjoyed um, the podcast, we plan to definitely do a lot more of these. Um, these are much, I'd say less or less time consuming uh, than the other factors. So, um, you know, if you want to subscribe, do so. If you just want to oh, pop, yeah. if you just want to pop in every now and then and see if we got any new stuff and you enjoy it, like, hey, reach out to us. Like that's yeah. that's that's what I like. I really want is Leave feedback, like feedback. Yeah, like comments, like who like who listened or did they think this was interesting? Do you think this was funny? Did they get pissed they off at sucked? this. Yeah, did they yeah. think it sucked? <laughs> it, it doesn't really matter, you know. At this point, I'm just kind of like, let us know. Let us know exactly. Yeah. For sure. Alrighty, guys. Well, we are signing off. Yep, have a good one.